Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. What you're listening to and what I'm reviewing today is the brand new tube microphone from Lewitt, the Pure Tube. If you are interested in this mic, it runs between $1,000 and $1,300, depending on the accessory kit that you get. Like always, links in the description. Also, full disclosure, this microphone is on loan from Lewitt so that I'm able to make this review. All the recording settings will be listed in the doobly-doo as well as the description down below. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. For the $1,300 SKU, you get this fantastic hard shell storage box. You'll, of course, get the microphone. You get a great shock mount with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch adapter. You get a magnetic pot filter, which clips right onto the shock mount. You get a 16-foot 7-pin to 7-pin XLR cable. You get the power supply and the power cable to that power supply. You get a mic storage bag, some documentation, and a couple of stickers. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels great. It has an all-metal body as well as a metal grill with very minimal give to it. On the front, you have the see-through glass panel so you can see the glowing tube. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. On the bottom, you have the 7-pin XLR port. The power supply is all metal and feels great. A nice clicky switch and no excessive wobble on any of the ports. And if it matters to you, this mic and accessories are assembled in China. All of the specs are listed in the description, and I will have the graphs up on screen in case you want to pause and take a closer look. The biggest spec here is for a tube microphone. It has a self noise of only 7 dBA. Now I am spinning around the pure tube to 90 degrees to show you the off axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the mic. Continuing around to 180 degrees, here we go at the second 90 degree angle, and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now I want to see how effective the microphone and the provided pop filter are at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and here is how the microphone sounds. Now I'm about six inches off with the mic pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here's how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the Lewitt PR tube. Now I'm about two feet away from the microphone. And now I'm about four feet away from the Lewitt PR tube. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, I am now typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a fairly well treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room. Now I want to see how effective the provided shock mount is at rejecting shocks. So I'll start by tapping on my desk to see if it can reject that noise. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Next, because I'm incredibly annoying and I want to be thorough, I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I'm running the microphone through two outboard preamps so you can hear how it sounds running through some higher end gear. The first one is the Warm Audio WA73, gain set at 35 dB, no EQ engaged, running into the UAX8, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. The second one being the Universal Audio LA610, the compressor section is bypassed, level set at plus 10 so we get as much tube coloration as possible, and the level set at 2.5, and I will have been switching back and forth so you can hear how both preamps sound. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a handful of other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hear the microphone outside of a vacuum. Starting on the Lewitt PureTube, I am six inches away, connected to the UAX8, 
Gain set at 32 dB, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Let's go to the first mic. First up, we have the Audio Technica AT2020, a $100 solid state condenser microphone. I am six inches off, gain set at 32 dB. Check the lower third. Let's do a whole bunch more of these. Back again on the Lewitt Pure Tube for a palate cleanser. Here is how it sounds. Let's do some more. Next, I am on the Lewitt LCT240. This is a $120 solid state condenser microphone. Six inches off, gain still set at 32 dB. That's how it sounds. Let's go back to the Pure Tube. Here is another palate cleanser to clear out your ear holes. This is the Lewitt Pure Tube. Let's go to another microphone. Now I am on the Lewitt LCT440. This goes for $290. It is another solid state condenser microphone. I am six inches off. My gain is still set at 32 dB. And that's how it sounds compared to a microphone that is about $1,000 more expensive. Let's do more. We are back on the Lewitt Pure Tube again so you can hear how this sounds in between each comparison. That's enough, let's go to another mic. Next, I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, TLM-103. This is a $1,200 solid state condenser microphone, still six inches off, gain still set at 32 dB. Are you surprised? Let's go back to the Pure Tube and do a bunch more comparisons. Back on the Lewitt Pure Tube, this is your ear cleaning canal thing. Let's do more of these. Now I am on the Lewitt LCT840, which is a $1,200 tube condenser microphone, six inches off, gain still set at 32 dB, cardioid polar pattern, no pad and no filter. Check the lower third, and let's go back to the pure tube and do some more comparisons. This is almost the halfway point, I think. This is the pure tube. Clean out your auditory canals. Let's compare more. Now I am on the Austrian Audio OC818. This goes for $1,250. It is another solid state condenser microphone, cardioid mode, no pad, no filters, six inches off. I increased my gain to 40 dB, and here is how this compares. Let's do some more. Now we are at the midpoint of the comparison section. Get a good feel for it. How does the Lewitt Pure Tube sound? Let's do the next one. Now I am on the Soyuz SU-023 Bomblet, which is another solid state condenser microphone. This costs around $1,400, six inches off, gain at 32 dB. Let's do more. Does it feel good to be halfway done with this? Because it certainly does for me. This is the pure tube. Here is how it sounds. Check the lower third. Let's go to the next one. Now I am on the Sony C100. This also goes for $1,400. It is another solid state condenser microphone, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filters. My gain is set at 34 dB and here is how this compares. Let's do some more. Hey, we're back on the Lewitt Pure Tube again. I don't know why I mumbled that, but here is how it sounds. Let's do some more of these. We're not done yet. Now I am on the Lewitt LCT940, which is an $1,800 tube condenser microphone, six inches off, gain set at 32 dB, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filters, and here is how this compares to its little brother, the Pure Tube. Let's go back and do some more. We are still not done, so here is another palate cleanser, still six inches off, gain still set at 32 dB. Let's go to the next one. Now I am on the Telefunken TF51, which is a $1,900 tube condenser microphone, six inches off, gain set at 32 dB, cardioid polar pattern, and here is how this compares to a microphone that is about $600 less expensive. Let's go back and do some more comparisons. I don't know why that was so weird, but I am back on the Lewitt Pure Tube again. Here is how it sounds. Get a feel for it and do more. Now I am on the LCT1040, which is a $3,500 tube condenser microphone, six inches off, gain set at 36 dB, 100% tube on the warm setting, no pad, no filters, cardioid polar pattern. I think I said everything and there you go. That's how it compares. I have no idea how many of these I have done, but in case I need some more, this is the pure tube. Yep, that's how it sounds. Are you surprised? For good measure, I am still on the 1040, still on cardioid, no pad, no filters, 100% tube, but I switched from the warm setting to the clear setting so you can hear the brighter tone of the 1040, just so you can hear the comparison. 
that's it for the 1040. This is going to be the penultimate palette cleanser. So here you go, Lewitt Pure Tube, six inches off, gain it 32 dB. Let's go to the second to last microphone. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI. This goes for $3,700. It is another solid state condenser microphone. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filters. Gain set at 32 dB, check the lower third. Let's go to the final microphone because this wasn't it. That microphone was the U87. What could the final microphone be? You know what it's going to be, but here is your Lewitt Pure Tube Palette Cleanser. Let's go to the last mic. And to close out the comparison section, I am on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. U67 reissue. This is a $7,500 tube condenser microphone. Six inches off, gain at 32 dB, Cardioid polar pattern, no pads, no filters. Does this sound $6,200 better than the Pure Tube? You tell me. Do I love this microphone? Yes, I love it. Is it worth it? Probably not. That's it for the comparisons. Let's go to the music test. <laughs> Are you worried about Captain Planet? Cause I promise that he is doing fine. Dang it. I did it again. I did the rundown and I made a promise that I can't keep. I don't know Captain Planet. I would love to. How is he doing? Do you remember him? All the... <laughs> so stupid. Let's go to the conclusion. All right, at the risk of sounding like a full-on marketing rep, I think that the Pure Tube is a really nice addition to Lewitt's existing lineup of microphones. And first up as far as pros has to be the 7 dBA self-noise. For a standard solid-state microphone, that is great, but for a tube microphone, that is absolutely bonkers. Secondly, the shock mount is probably the best that I have ever used in terms of effectiveness of rejecting shocks and the ease of use with the ability to just loosen it and then reposition the microphone however you want it. It is a fantastic shock mount. My third pro is something most people won't care about, but because I have my tube power supplies on my desk, I love that it is so small. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the 1040 controller. I know it's not a fair comparison because the Pure Tube has no polar patterns other than cardioid, no filters, no pads but it takes up so little of my desk real estate, I love it. Also, the build quality of the microphone feels absolutely fantastic, and the accessories that come with the microphone are great. Then as far as cons, I have a couple of wishes. The first one being that they included a firm microphone clip with the $1,300 kit. I could not use this shock mount in my isolation cab, so I had to yoink the adapter or the mount off of my LCT240. For $1,300, I wish they would have included that. Secondly, I just wish they included a dust cover for the microphone because this sat on my stand for weeks and I had to borrow one from the 1040 to keep dust from getting on the capsule. Again, for that price, that would just be a nice to have. I also noticed that the microphone isn't the best at rejecting the room, so if you record with minimal treatment or around a lot of reflective surfaces, that may become an issue, and I need to be fair, the grill of this microphone does have a bit of resonance to it. If you tap on the stand or tap on the shock mount or the body of the mic, it doesn't start ringing but I need to point that out. And this final con is more of an FYI, and it's something that I pointed out in my LCT 1040 review as well. If you have the microphone on the stand and you move around it a lot, expect to bump the pop filter and have it fall on the floor. So just be aware of that and make sure you have a flashlight so you can find it when it falls under your desk. 
And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Lewitt Pier Tube? As far as the overall sound, I hear it as being a bit of a tamer version of their solid state microphones. You have a nice controlled low end, a neutral midsection that is less overpowered by the upper frequencies. You have a little bit of a bump in the presence and treble, but not too much. The main focus in the upper frequencies on the pure tube is in the air frequencies. So you don't lose out all of that detail, but it is not as aggressive as the solid state microphones. But Compared to their other tube offerings like the 840, 940, and 1040, I think the upper frequencies of the Pure Tube come across a little bit less smooth. On the electric guitar, I quite liked it, especially because of the detail in the upper frequencies, but it doesn't come across over boosted or overbearing. On the acoustic guitar, again, I thought it worked really well. It is full bodied, but not muddy. And then you have that articulation in the upper frequencies and the liveliness that I just love on acoustic guitar. For singing vocals, which is what I believe this was designed for, I think it is fantastic. It has a neutral midsection and then a bright and airy top end without sounding artificial. And for spoken word, it is just clear and easy to understand. And I had multiple people leave comments saying, this is the best sounding microphone I have ever heard on your voice. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Lewitt Pure Tube? Yes, I would for some people. If you're somebody who loves the sound of Lewitt's solid state microphones, but you want something with a bit less of an aggressive upper frequency range, and you don't want to have to worry about the self noise that is sometimes an issue with tube microphones, I think that's who's really going to love this thing because it gives you that Lewitt sound, tames it down a bit, makes it a bit more refined, and it doesn't introduce any new issues with the tube. Or if you're somebody out there who for some reason needs a tube microphone and you want a bit more articulation in the upper frequencies, that is what this is bringing to the table because when I compare it to other tube mics like the TF-51, U67, it just gives you a bit more of that articulation and detail and you do also get that super low self noise. All right, that's all that I've got for you today. I am not going to ramble on. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa, boop.